in a case based scenario and uh, this is a uh, sir before we just start with the session i would request all my attendees to pay close attention and if you have any doubts or suggestions you please write it on the chat box we'll be taking the questions at the end of the session so thank you so much sir the screen is all yours yeah thank you so this is a 62 year old male patient and uh, a non smoker and he's a hypertensive and presents with shortness of breath since 4 days and cough with blood stained sputum there is no fever or chest pain there is history of pain in the limbs off and on for the last 2 months there is history of uh, no recent travel history there is no surgical history the past history of uh, cancer there is no significant past history also so once we are examining this patient the patient bp is 90 by 70 there is tachycardia tachypnea spo2 is low as you can see on uh, it's 85% and uh, patient is uh, having a hemoglobin of 14.5 liver function is normal and the creatinine is normal so looking at this uh, you can see the x ray x ray is uh, showing a bit of a dirty lung fields there is nothing specific if you look at the x ray of this patient but definitely the saturation is low so coming to the question that this kind of patient what is the probability so any patient coming to you with acute onset dyspnea shortness of breath chest pain and cough then pulmonary embolism should be the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism should be taken as a differential and this patient as you can see uh, was giving a history of uh, pain in the limbs in the uh, last uh, two months and uh, otherwise there is no other comorbidities suggestive of a high risk for pulmonary embolism so if we look at the probability of patient having a pe we have to first see whether the patient is hemodynamically stable or unstable so if you look at this uh, uh, cartoon you can see that once you have a embolism or a clot in the pulmonary artery there is increased right ventricular afterload which leads to right ventricular dilatation and then this whole uh, cycle of uh, uh, right ventricular ischemia decreased right ventricular contractility output then the left ventricle preload is affected cardiac output is reduced blood pressure gets reduced coronary artery perfusion is reduced and the oxygen delivery is reduced so this cycle continues till the time the patient develops a obstructive shock and then if the shock is not treated the patient may die so it is very important to recognize pulmonary embolism early because unrecognized pulmonary embolism a major pulmonary embolism can lead to death within a few hours so i will be taking uh, up the evidence from these guidelines and these are the recently published guidelines for diagnosis of pulmonary embolism and management so if you aren't the one of the most important point in pulmonary embolism is that we have to find out whether the patient is hemodynamically stable or not and if the hem patient is hemodynamically unstable or instability is there then there are three scenarios number one there is a cardiac arrest scenario where the patient lands into arrest number two is a obstructive shock where the patient has a bp of 90 or you require vasopressors to keep the bp more than 90 mmhg and there are signs of end organ hyperperfusion like patient has cold clammy skin the urine output is less or the lactate is rising the third scenario is persistent hypotension which is a systolic less than 90 or there is a systolic bp drop more than 40 mm hg of the normal blood pressure which the individual has and it lasts for more than 15 minutes and it not caused by arrhythmia hypovolemia or sepsis so this is a very important hemodynamic parameter which we have to assess at the beginning of the evaluation any patient coming to you you have to see whether he is he or she is hemodynamically stable or not so if you have a suspected pe then we have to look at the hemodynamic stability and you have two scenarios where the patient is hemodynamically unstable 
and then you have a patient who is hemodynamically stable so if you have a patient who is hemodynamically stable that means you have time for the patient and then you can evaluate the patient also then you have to look at the criteria for diagnosis uh, of pulmonary embolism which are two revised geneva rule and the wells rule and you initiate anticoagulation in high risk or intermediate risk patients which is giving them parenteral lmwh or fondaparenox or and if the patient can take orally or you are uh, wanting to use a noac or a newer oral anticoagulant you can start that if the patient is with hemodynamic instability then for confirmation of the diagnosis you can do use a bedside echo or a ctpa and anticoagulation is started without delay so it is important to note that in patient with a hemodynamic compromise you start the unfractionated heparin weight adjusted bolus is given without a delay so this is very important point because a lot of time gets wasted in evaluating the patient and this is how you predict whether the patient is a high risk or a low risk it is important because you have to see the patient and divide the patient into a clinical probability which is low probability intermediate probability and high probability of pulmonary embolism and these are the points in which you have to evaluate the patient and uh, once you have the you can number the uh, patient 1 2 3 is the highest number and uh, you can look at the score and if the score is more than 5 or more than 3 then it is a high probability pulmonary embolism so in this patient uh, we calculated and uh, the intermediate clinical probability of pe was likely given his heart rate you can see we gave two and uh, hemopsis and lower limb pain was there so another score is modified wells score where you look at the following points dvt no alternative diagnosis tachycardia immobilization prior history of dvt hemopsis and presence of malignancy so this criteria can also be used for clinical prediction of pulmonary embolism and our patient fitted into a intermediate probability of pe according to the wells score so in both the scores the wells score and revised geneva rule our patient fitted into intermediate probability so what will we do now the point is initiate the anticoagulation so which is very important as i told you since our patient is relatively stable his blood pressure is relatively stable there is no hemodynamic instability so you can start anticoagulation with a parenteral anticoagulants like a lmwh or fondaparenox is recommended over the unfractionated heparin so lmwh please prefer a once daily regime so you can use a lmwh enoxaparin or deltaparin in this patient some people can start unfractionated heparin also but please remember serious renal impairment is a contraindication to ufh to lmwh so ufh can be started when there is a primary reperfusion you are considering or you want to you have a patient who is renally impaired so this is the important point you have to remember or if the patient is having severe obesity you can start unfractionated heparin otherwise the choice for anticoagulation is lmwh or noax but remember noax are not re recommended in patients with renal impairment or in patients with anti phospholipid antibody syndrome during pregnancy and lactation so these are the four contraindications of noax and one has to be very careful so most of the patients are started with lmwh so we started 
the patient on Fonda Paradox after sending the thrombophilia profile. And this is the algorithm in a case of hemodynamic stable PE. So as we did in this patient, we assess the clinical probability of PE. Then if the patient has low to intermediate probability of PE, then you can do the D-dimer test. If the D-dimer is negative, no treatment is required. D-dimer is used to exclude our PE in a lower intermediate clinical probability set. If the D-dimer is positive, we do a CTPA. And if the PE is confirmed, we treat. If there is no PE, there is no treatment. If the patient is a high clinical probability, we do a CTPA. Then if the PE is confirmed, we treat. And if the PE is not confirmed, we do not treat or investigate further.